so here goes the second episode like uh, i want to ask you sir uh, how was your childhood like born and brought up i was not a kid <laughs> no 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 i was silent from the okay. beginning only yeah. i was born and brought up in a small village yeah. near a place called polachi okay which is 40 kilometers from kaimatur acha so almost till 10th standard i was in village only yeah. then for 11th 12th i moved to my uncle's place okay so uh, my uncle was in army <laughs> so my grandfather was also you became disciplined in life <laughs> yeah that was there from my uh, childhood okay so my grandfather was also in army huh. post independence he became police oh so i always always have this love towards this armed uh, people so be it armed. moreover i can say like you have a love for uniform see there is a difference between uh, loving uniform always that love yeah. uniform is love hmm. but apart from uniform you have some you no know, connection with yeah. the armed people the yeah. uh, their life their yeah. sacrifice yeah. so that 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 i got it from my family only yeah. mostly from mother's side yeah. my grandfather my uncle so 11th 12th i was with my uncle huh. then i moved to coimbatore huh. to pursue my btech okay i studied in a very famous place tamil nadu agriculture university yeah, yeah. it has produced so many bureaucrats <laughs> so many ias ips yeah, ifs yeah. so this the motivation to pursue upsc came from my college only tnu like seeing so many bureaucrats coming out from there naturally naturally yeah. so when your seniors are more in number in bureaucracy hmm. you will you wanted to pursue that hmm. same happens in any other college if many people are into it yeah. as a junior you wanted to go to it, to IT so yeah. that trigger came from my college yeah. then once i was into upsc i i chose only ips hmm. then forest because yeah. my seniors most of my seniors are into forest service yeah so luckily many people don't know what is forest service yeah. and what is their life what is uh, the uh-huh. jungle life but luckily i was i know yeah. what is in forest service also so in civils i prefer if i ips uh-huh. in uh, side by side i prepared for forest service also yeah. so in the same year i went to both the interviews hmm. uh, ifs clicked and ips didn't okay then i came here so like after being an engineer did you work walked somewhere or did it directly preparing for preparing yeah. i went to delhi for one and a half years yeah. i studied in delhi stayed yeah. in old rajendra nagar like yeah. any most of these uh, aspirants then came back to chennai yeah. then i worked in uh, sankara is academy okay. sankar sir is my guru yeah he is my close uh, no how to say he is like my family member only yeah yeah so i was with sankar sir for 5 years i was working okay. so i used to go till interview huh. i have been to interview five times huh. five times i didn't clear yeah so i used to broke yeah so that time the question was sankar is academy yeah. i was working in sankar is only for 5 years yeah. then i gave forest as well as civils yeah in the second click i got uh, indian forest service as we were saying about forest those who are watching i want to see another podcast of mine with k vijay shankar sir uh, he's an ips he also tried for f- yeah you know him oh he is a friend okay 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 so uh, he was also telling me that i tried for five times in the for this thing and it was not cracking but at last i did so i would ask you like when things we try for something you were trying to get into ips trying to get into ips sometimes down the line you feel it's not working out so what was the motivation behind no i have to do it See, for different people it works different way yeah some some people get uh, they will get into the service on the first uh, first attempt only yeah. first attempt whatever service they wanted they will go there yeah for some people it is seven attempt or eight attempt like me yeah some people make say wanted to ivs huh. then wanted they may get ips yeah then there will be a factor which will say huh. you are meant for ips or you are meant for ifs uh-huh. that factor will be there that factor for me luckily is kaziranga national park yeah so i didn't know that i'll get assigned no that happened after you got ifs i am saying when you were trying you were not able to crack it what was the motivation that, that motivation for me is sankar is academy for me it is sankar sir all whenever i fail no sankar sir is always there are you give you complete your attempts you exhaust your attempts yeah. till then you i am there the academy is there so that uh, question was there that motivation was always there for me yeah. similarly for everyone there will be some role models yeah. there will be some role models you have to he- have your role models yeah. there will be seniors or some other like for me it is sankar sir yeah. there will be someone who will push you yeah. so that should be there 
if you are into the service in one or two attempts that's well and good yeah. in case if it is lagging three four then life will become difficult yeah so then you need to uh, have alternative plans so you, the, the idea of having plan b plan yeah. c will come in yeah. so then it will become very difficult luckily for me there is no plan b because i was in sankaraya academy yeah. i was teaching yeah. Yeah. so i didn't have any plan b i was teaching yeah i wanted to get into ips or ifs yeah. then i came here but uh, my life was i struggled a lot because seven attempts i gave you have seen a lot of failures in life i have given eight attempts in civil service seven before getting ifs kafi berozgari dekha hai aapne it's difficult but no when you want to become something you should not worry about this failures really you believe that? that do you believe in miracles i believe in hard work okay you fail seven times you put some more hard work you will become you'll achieve that in later i believe in hard work i was not i didn't have this thought of leaving this civil service and going somewhere else just hit on that same point i know there is only eight nine attempts hmm. seven attempts i i didn't clear yeah then i became ifs after becoming an ifs i gave one more attempt yeah i just tried again i went to till interview i didn't get uh, ips distractions never disturbed you so many distractions will come because you are in in, in case if you are giving for five yeah, attempts yeah. six attempts it is seven eight years it's a huge process yeah. seven eight years of your uh, prime age yeah, yeah. 21 to 27 28 yeah. is into upsc yeah lots of distraction will be there again when you focus on something mm. these distractions should not uh, disturb, disturb you. you and i think as you were saying you no know, that is a time or that is a age when we comes from adolescence to a uh, uh, manlyhood so as we yeah the biggest uh, fear or biggest uh, um, the pain that you have to see is you will always compare it's human tendency to compare mm-hmm. your colleagues your friends in private they'll yeah. be earning in lakhs yeah they'll get car they'll go to rome they'll yeah. go to different places yeah. and you will be in old rajendra nagar and studying uh, polity economy and all but again i'm telling you you see your future yeah. even today my salary is way less than my uh, uh, friends in private mm-hmm. sector salary mm-hmm. but the satisfaction that getting i'm getting here in kaziranga that's something what they cannot afford hmm. so there is always a trade off you decided to be in government service yeah ifs ips yeah. you know what you are you what yeah. you are looking for yeah that will you will never get it in private sector yeah so you are all you should be always ready to compromise something in that case as you said no like uh, that my salary like is a less compared to a corporate mm-hmm. sector very less very very less yeah so here sorry simplest example you do night duty in private sector there is a separate rate for it yeah there's a day uh-huh. night uh-huh. and you do a night shift the salary is little more yeah. in government at least i've seen forest department and police uh-huh. there is no day there is no night yeah. you have to work day and night yeah i would say in 6 months of range training in my range training every day night except 2 3 days uh-huh. every day night i was doing night patrolling uh-huh. and i used to attend my office at 11 o'clock my salary say there is no night shift there is no day shift that's same in private you get you no know, perks yeah. accordingly yeah. yeah but the peace that i had the satisfaction i had after doing such rigorous work that's something that you will not get it in the private sector that's a trade off just that, that's what i was going to connect you know like as you said like uh, you have a s- happiness you have a, a you know enjoyment behind when this might be the salary is let acceptance of that is very important because i want to ask you like uh, you know when i was doing this podcast a lot of people said if you have done something as you could have learned a lot of money mm. i mm. preached a lot of people this is what i want to do people said no that by luckily there's one of my friend who is actually financing this uh, nayan i accepted the fact i might not earn a lot of money right now mm. but i am happy down the lane mm. so you think like if anybody wants to do anything particularly in life you have to push for it nobody else is going to do it it's a simple before you become an civil servant hmm. you know this is the salary it's not that you don't know before you become a ifs yeah you know this is the salary this is the scale this is the level you know everything yeah. and this is your cadre this is this 
you must know about your card or your service only then you're g- coming into the uh, system yeah. then you should not trip about the salary you should accept it yeah. and moment you say you are in ifs you know your perks yeah. you know the life that you are going to have yeah. and you should always look for that one only see this salary and materialist things secondary yeah. what you're looking for in life what you want to do as a ifs officer that's the primary thing yeah. that should motivate you not the uh, secondary tertiary things no yeah motivation comes from ourselves from motivation i want to ask you one thing like well we were passing by uh, we see a lot of water bottles litter and stuffs like that like you all are trying hard to conserve this beauty of our nature what do you think like for a normal human being what should we be more more careful no i'll tell you how the process in says before any vehicle enters inside the park we used to check even the handbags okay so that no plastic is taken inside the park Yeah. despite this yeah. despite checking individual baggages yeah. you see letters yeah. see so every day evening you know the, how risky uh, rhino sir we just saw it every day evening my used my staff used to come here hmm. they know where people used to get on yeah. they used to collect the letters hmm. and for this only we are wasting a lot of time so if, if our uh, tourist hmm. who comes here hmm. as tourist some people come here as a nature lover yeah absolutely no issue there they love nature they come here they maintain silence they just enjoy the nature and they go back huh, huh. but people when here when you come as a tourist that this is i have paid 100 rupees and this is my place yeah. if that is the attitude then you will do all the little taken for granted taken for granted so what i'll tell you an attitude the difference in attitude say you have a house yeah big house yeah i paid 100 rupees to enter into your house yeah just to see your house hmm. i come here and i see you and see your house and i go back hmm. absolutely fine you have allowed it yeah yeah now i have paid 100 rupees hmm. i'm coming to your bedroom yeah and i'm poking you yeah just imagine how will you feel disturbing the privacy yes that's that's that should not happen in a safari or in any wildlife based tourism you yeah. come here this is their house yeah you have come here to enjoy their life yeah. to see the life of wild animals yeah. you just observe it enjoy it and go back take yeah. picture and go back by this you will also learn you will also understand the importance of our wildlife they will also not be disturbed yeah. park will also get some revenue to run the park yeah. so when you go inside the park you just remember that this is someone else's house yeah you're going to see the house yeah. and you have to come back silently mm. you should not disturb anything you're going as such you have to come mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. you go inside horn put litter means you are going inside the bedroom and poking the uh, people in the bedroom that's something not no good for the people not good for the park at least yeah yeah so we are walking in a bridge right now sir so in life we go through a situations of worst situations helpless situations we can't do anything of, of that particular time what was your point like to bridge between that situations and to move on in life see everybody goes through this phase ha huh. everyone yeah. even if you're rich poor hmm. you are from this class this everybody will go hmm. to a rough phase yeah i was also in that phase yeah simple you maintain silence observe observe people around now i'm telling you the worst phases in your life will teach you more lessons than what you've learned in last 20 years you believe that i sincerely i i crossed that phase just now oh. so that the the, the rough uh, phases in your life will teach you more lessons most importantly that will teach you about people whom to trust whom not to trust whom yeah. to take to your home whom to yeah. drop outside the, just outside the home yeah. so that helps you to grow as a person yeah so you will grow as a person only when you face difficulties when mm. you when you when only when you cross that rough phase yeah when life is easy then you won't grow so mm. i always believe that. so whenever you face a rough huh. uh, face huh. you just understand that you are you are becoming stronger yeah so life is you no know, teaching you something the huh. life wants to teach you something before you enter into something Uh, so i took it like that i was in very bad phase like before i entered into kaziranga i was in down phase only after hmm. after moving from chennai hmm. so i was not in a 
April. I was in a downhill only. Yeah. So I became little silent. Yeah. Not little silent. You can ask any of my friends. I used, used to be a silent person only. Okay. But I am not that much silent. I never yeah, feel you are introvert. Like you are very... <laughs> like whenever I am talking to no, you. No, no. Yeah. That's good actually. No, that's good only. Yeah. That I became silent. Then I absorbed people. Then I came to know, okay, these are the real friends. Hmm. These are the friends for some reasons. Hmm. So whom to relay, whom not to relay. Yeah. And particularly about life. Life with difficulties is good thing happened to any person. So that you become very strong. You know, like recently I was doing a podcast with the ADGP sir, Clay sir of Manipur Police. He was telling one thing. Uh, when situations are worse, like we all were going through a COVID phase. Everybody is facing an issue like rich man, anyone, mm-hmm. anyone. That's the ability of a person how he takes a risk. Risk can be observation, as you said. That is also a taking risk. So you personally also feel that. Tough time, take, 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 you need to take a risk. See, there is no risk in it. I would say there is no risk in it. Yeah. But it's difficult. Point is how you cross that bridge. Say this bridge is difficult one. Yeah. yeah. There are different ways to cross it. Yeah. You can cry and you can run. Yeah. You can be very silent and you walk slowly. Yeah. There are more chances that you will cross this bridge safe when you take a second path. Yeah. Silent and going, yeah. taking step by step. I always believe in that. Step by when, step. Whenever there is a rough phase coming yeah. or whenever there is a difficulty, you just be silent and absorb it yeah. and take things slowly. Time will heal. Automatically time will heal. Yeah. You have to accept that. Yeah. So, uh, you know... I don't know how to say this, like the age we were talking about, like 24, 30, that particular age, a boy or a girl comes from that adolescence to a maturity stage. Mm-hmm. There's a game plays of relationship, love and stuff like that. Like I want to ask you, like when you were preparing, how was the situations of handling, again, that bridge thing of your two chord personal to your professional life? So at the outset, I'll tell my uh, idea of this 20s. Yeah. 20s is not to earn. Yeah. 20s is to gain experience. You mean to say like 20 to 30? 20 to 30. Okay. It's not to earn money, no. Yeah. It's to gain experience. Yeah. So I was ready for that. That's why I could able to spend 7 years into UPSC, 8 years into UPSC. Yeah. So that question doesn't come. Yeah. Particularly for youngsters who are into relationship yeah. and after break, I... I did love marriage only. Yeah. I was in relationship for six years. My God. After that, I got married. I told you, no, seven years into one thing, you need support. You need backup. You yeah. need a strong support from back. Huge role played by her. Too. My uh, yeah. wife. She's Sangavi. Yeah. She's from Namakal. Okay. So, during the preparation, after the preparation, during Kaziringa oh. life, hmm. she's my backbone. Yeah. So, she's my strong supporter. And... When it becomes easy no, to under, then manage your personal and professional life. Yes. When, when your spouse understands you, yeah. I think there is no better gift than that in anything else yeah. in this life. Yeah. So, that's the main thing. Yeah. So, she understood me during preparation time also. So, he, he, she had belief that yeah. this guy will crack one day. Oh. So, that is always there. And after coming here, and she knows that I wanted to be an IPS. Yeah. 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 So, she knows that I love that rough life. Ah. So, after coming to Kaziranga... Ah. She was also happy, okay, this guy wanted this, he is into this uh, Kaziranga. Huh. So, she's, he, that way she is happy. And uh, again, for people who are going through breakups and all, see, you have to be very strong in relationship. Mm. If something is not going either side, mm-hmm. you have to settle the things. Again, observe. Again, observe. <laughs> take things slowly, yeah. step by step. Yeah. Don't take drastic uh, decisions. Sudden, Any sudden decision taken... Huh. Won't give a better results. Yeah. Won't give a right results. So take things slowly. So yeah. whenever there is a problem, slow, observe it, then take things slowly. That's one thing that I followed. Even I was not knowing that I could take things slowly. I was I was in extreme things only. Yeah. Yeah. You ask my friends, I used to say, Pire is extreme. Okay. Extreme. Extreme in what sense? Like taking the last decision maker. Not like that. Say for example, if I become lazy, I'll be extremely lazy. Oh! <laughs> if I start working, Extreme work. I work 24 yeah, oh into God. 7. I used to take classes from 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock in the evening. evening. Even yeah. my Sankasar used to ta- ask, you, you behave like human beings sometimes. <laughs> this is not human being. 
so that was an i was an extreme only huh. so i was little toned down during this rough phase yeah, only yeah. i told you sankar sir passed away huh. after that i was in a very very down phase mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I, then i became no i molded myself okay i have to take things slowly i have to observe it huh. i have to be silent that 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 was one life lesson i learned during this last 2 3 years is there anything like Though there is no exist of time machine, but if you get a chance to go back to ten, fifteen years back down the line, is there anything that you want to change yourself? That's a tricky question. Ten, <laughs> fifteen <laughs> years, I'll go back and I'll just say, any difficulty is not a difficulty; ah. it's just a learning. Yeah. Be be prepared for that. So, I, as a school student, say you're facing a twelfth standard examination. or you are facing some coaching yeah. uh, neat or exam you always feel nervous yeah no i i'll just say to those people there is nothing going to happen yeah. nothing drastic will change mm. so take things slowly don't get nervous take it easy do you believe in uh, super powers like uh, not super powers i want to ex- if anything is going to happen that's going to happen do you believe that not exactly again my point comes to this if something has to happen let it happen yeah. but you try ha huh. we can't change i don't know whether destiny is true or not yeah. we can't i can't comment on it yeah. but if you want to do try it yeah. whether you achieve it or not that's different game altogether you have to seek pleasure in uh, the process not in yeah. the uh, result If you are, if you if you get pleasure in the process, then that's well and good. The end doesn't matter. Ever felt that we are still running on that rat race of life, as you say, like twenty to thirty is that, not a stage. That's true. That's very much true. You feel that? That's that's created you know, by the society. Lots of stories coming. No, this student have committed suicide because of this mark. Mm, mm. This student have committed suicide because she's not able to become ah, a doctor, something ah, like that. Ah. That's really you uh, know disheartens me. Yeah. So again, life is bigger than what you know at that point of time. At twenty, I think you are the perfect example. You no, tried I, for seven times. Yes. Yeah. No. At twenty, becoming this is your life. Huh. But life is it's very large. It's yeah. bigger. Huh. So at maybe you will expose to that life at twenty-two. You may not know. Yeah. You have not become this service, and you enter into this service. Maybe you you will be doing great in this service than that that, that service. but i enjoyed the process i tried it is not that i left the uh, service in uh, middle i tried it i couldn't now i am in the service so i may do a bigger a greater role in this service than the other service so you have to accept that acceptance is life sometimes you have to accept it but don't leave anything in middle if you are con- convinced that you wanted to become this you try it you enjoy the process in case if end result is not good then you have to consider the alternative thing thank you so much like never thought that impromptu sessions like <laughs> some people might think this is scripted but we know how it is you were super busy in 2 3 days we just got a chance in such an impromptu sessions and i personally learned a lot of things from you uh you have i have come in a i would say busiest schedule you should come in a lesser time i can show you uh, kaziranga in a better way yeah. and you will get to know the kaziranga don't worry i'm going to irritate you again <laughs> <laughs> most welcome <laughs> so how was your feeling like giving this doing this podcast with me see i thought you are going to take interview on kaziranga i wanted to you know tell many things about kaziranga mm-hmm. to the people mm-hmm. because the stories that i heard yeah. in last 7 8 months yeah. It just no. Even if I uh, remember those stories, it, I get goosebumps. Yeah. So many stories are there about Kaziranga yeah, National Park. Yeah. The staffs, the yeah. compromise, yeah. the leaders. Yeah. So there is a person called Lagan. If you can share director. one, he was a field director. Yeah. You go to any forest department. Say you meet a senior level mm-hmm. officers. Mm-hmm. They used to say, "This is field director's car. Ah. This is IG's car. Ah. There is three star, two star." Yeah, yeah. During his time. they used to say this is lagansa's elephant he will not do patrolling in roads he will do patrolling in elephant so that he can cover each and every territory of kaziranga national park that was the leadership yeah. during 1990s and 2000s yeah. and 
you interact with my staffs yeah. who are 30 years old in kaziranga mm. they'll be able to tell a story which will which will make not to sleep, make you not to sleep for minimum one week so i was inside the park for 10 days i was yeah. camping inside so only duty is to hear stories about kaziranga nation park along from the learnings then i understood the importance of a leadership yeah when leader is strong automatically it will percolate to the lower level exactly. when leader is little lethargic huh. then there will be indiscipline creeped in so lagan sir is again goes goes bump i've heard so so many stories about lagan yeah. sir just one thing yeah. so when lagan sir was there huh. he there is no need for him to go inside the park to make things discipline the just a message that lagan sir is visiting this range will make things discipline said yeah. so that kind of leadership that <laughs> that i've heard yeah. and there is a person called dd boro okay he is he was range officer in kaziranga national park for 23 years okay people in assam you can ask any people in assam they say working one term in kaziranga national park will make you mad My you God. can ask anyone ha huh. two three years in kaziranga kaziranga national park will exhaust any person he was range of range officer yeah range officer will have more uh, patrolling more inspection than df officer so as a range officer he was in kaziranga national park 23 years My God. that's really an inspiration he is a true wildlifer so these are the stories which you no know, inspired me actually yeah so always i remember lagan sir or dd boro even my uh, df officer yeah. ramesh kumar gogi sir he was he became range of officer in 89 88 yeah. 89 in next two years he will be retired the entire service he was he dedicated to wildlife my god he was in namiri he was in orang he was in kaziranga so all these people still people so, are there too passionate about their extremely passionate about wildlife and only thing is it's not in limelight they mm. people don't know about wildlife yeah. and people who have contributed to wildlife people must know about officers like lagan sir dd boro Uh, Ramesh Kumar Gogi sir my field director is perfect next there is, if you want to know anyone who is 100 percentage perfect next you must meet my field director definitely so yeah. kumar sir yeah, yeah. he say for example if he wants to construct a bridge huh. he will he will just say how to make it he will moment he sees this bridge he will think in this way how to make this one perfect extremely disciplined extremely huh. punctual ha huh. extremely passionate about forest he his entire life is in forest i was in village then moved to tnu college mm-hmm. then i chose forest service That's my right. field director he, he was born in brought up in forest near forest <laughs> so his inspiration was a forest officer yeah. he studied forestry yeah. he did msc in forestry yeah. then became a forest officer oh people like these huh. you know these people have inspired me So yeah. then I realized the importance of forest service also particularly in wildlife yeah. wildlife people they their sacrifice is huge so it's no less than army or no less than a police that's my learning in last 7 8 months in kaziranga yeah and what about your feeling like you know i think i said the last question this is will be the last question like uh, a lot of youth officers are coming in bureaucracy uh, how do you feel like things will be more easy because youth's points of things week. will get better because the world have changed a lot yeah technology have changed a lot yeah. if you're not adapting to the changes yeah. any system will fail so youths with the right attitude they are entering into the system you can see any uh, any service you take yeah. any officer you meet they will be dynamic because upsc is not easy to crack crack it. only people with the right attitude with right knowledge with right adaptability they get into the service yeah. so i think this is a good thing so people are technologically uh, mm. superior they are open minded they are dynamic yeah. i think this is good for the system 10 years down the line you will definitely see a huge change in bureaucracy be it forest bureaucracy or police or yeah. civil there will be some differences maybe yeah. maybe it will take some time because there is always a lag because two different generations hmm. you now new generation have come into bureaucracy when they take over a middle level mm. uh, offices yeah. then the real changes will happen and what about your point of view like uh, as we see like what i was trying talking like earlier things were different like an officer naturally is to come like as i approached you you said yes but some people think like conventions are different like if you are an officer you shouldn't come closer yes. 
point of being an officer is you're working for the people yeah when you're not open to people when you're not accessible to people hmm. then you're not officer only ha huh. simple yeah you can talk to any officer at yeah. district level they are always open to people only yeah. you by now you'd have learned this <laughs> it can be ias or ips or ifs hmm. we, we are ready to mingle with the people we want yeah. to learn from the people see at the end I want I feel like a vibe of a friend like you know while talking with the bureaucrats nowadays <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, generation have changed <laughs> maybe that yeah true maybe technology yeah. social media yeah. social media have taught us a lot of things no it's good or bad do, like for your point it's of both i would say it's both mm. it's double edged sword because you do something bad it reaches to entire india in no time yeah if you do something good that also reaches yeah True. So True. there is a huge accountability on uh, non bureaucracy these days through social media, and the negative side is people are not able to understand what is right and what is what is true and what is not true. Yeah, they just believe whatever it is shared in the uh, news media, which is not uh, good. Difference between It react be a, and respond. That they should see any post critically only yeah. whether it can be good or not. <laughs> for example, simple. For example, see there is a police or a forest guard. See, he just slept, uh, slapped one person. Okay. See, this clip is forwarding in the uh, WhatsApp. Yeah. Suddenly, people will abuse this police or for us that this is bad, this is brutality, this is arrogance. Just widen the picture. Huh. Say, this guy have killed a person. Yeah. Or this guy have snatched a chain mm. from a uh, woman. Woman. And he was caught by forest or police or some other guards, and he now slaps this person. Now, if you see the big picture. Yeah. what's your reaction so True. so what's up it can be used by criminals also yeah it can be used by a good person also yeah. just like knife the difference is whether it's with the criminal or it's with the doctor <laughs> that's a good example <laughs> okay i won't take much of your time thank you so much once more for giving me this oh, time yes. and sh- show the beautiful thanks class. my pleasure having you here yeah. and i want to you know just give more information about kaziranga particularly wildlife yeah. importance yeah. of wildlife yeah the attitude that uh, that should be with the people before they come to yeah. uh, any right. any park not just kaziranga national park before visiting any park you just have this attitude that you are going inside others homes yeah just to learn their life yeah so it is not yours it's others even when i come here no i always have this feel okay mm. they are their they are the owners mm. i am the servants of the mm. uh, yep. house so that that should be always there when you have that attitude when society have this attitude mm. trust me india is richest country when it comes to true richness not mm. about money mm. you can never see such park anywhere in this world, world yeah. you go to south africa you have you will see a huge parks but real wilderness you will see only in india yeah. parks like kaziranga jimkar but sundarbans so we i think we have to celebrate this yeah. if you have a right attitude definitely india will, be, will, will, will should be able to celebrate the parks definitely I need to come once more again to do this side of things to you with you. <laughs> Take care. Have a nice day. See. Thank you.